The longsword truly is the most iconic medieval sword in the world, and it has become the symbol for chivalry, justice, knighthood, valour, and nobility. And men were allowed to carry this sword not only for self-defence, but to proclaim to the world that they held the ideals that this sword represented dear to their hearts. But not anymore. But never fear, because there is a way that one can bear the long sword as in times of old. Not exactly in times of old, but good enough and you wouldn't be breaking the law. Presenting the long sword shirt with royal coat of arm style mantling, the long sword sits front and centre in the majesty that it rightly deserves. As always, available through Teespring, link in the description. Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I'll be having a look at the city Novigrad from the video game The Witcher 3 and assess how historically accurate and practical or effective its defences are. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the medieval castle-style defences of the city. And before we begin, I gotta say, like, uh, m my overall feeling of uh, Novigrad, uh, at the end of, you know, me having a good look at it, I get very much the same kind of conclusion as I do with The Witcher 3 as a game in its whole. And that is a very love-hate relationship. There is so much to love about this game, and, you know, the comparison so much to love about this city, yet there are a lot of things that just let me down in it that ruins one of the best video game experiences I probably could have had. In regards to The Witcher as a whole, so much about this game I, you know, really love. But I just can't stand the main character, he doesn't interest me. If I could have made my own character and explore this rich, vibrant and detailed world, the game would be over a hundred times more enjoyable for me. Because when you have such a wonderful world, you need to still do stuff in it, and if you find that you're not, you know, interested in the things you can do because you're not really interested in the character, let's see there. Now, that's just speaking for me. Uh, I know it does not apply for the larger majority of people because The Witcher 3 is just beloved by so many people. That's just, you know, my own thoughts and feelings on the game. And very much like I was saying before, this is my feelings of the city of Novigrad because, oh, oh my goodness, so much to love about it. In terms of the detail and authenticity of the buildings themselves, it's just incredible. Everything, so much looks beautiful. But when we take a closer look at the accuracy of uh, certain things, like, uh, for example, the thickness of the thatch on these uh, buildings here. Like, thatch needs to be around a foot thick, generally, to actually work. L like, the rain of the, you know, uh, rain coming down on this roof here, on this thatch, would go straight through. It would leak to, like, anything, just be horrible. So, this is what we kind of find with this city as well, in regards to its defences. There's a, a couple of big mistakes that really ruin the whole point of having de big defended walls. The first thing that I'll say about Novigrad is that they got the size right. I mean, if you've watched any of my other reviews looking at you know, you know medieval style cities, medieval fantasy or whatnot, that one of the things that I constantly mention is that they're never big enough to reflect the proper size of a medieval city. Well, that is not the case with Novigrad. They did it right. This is the size of a city. And it's so much more immersive as a result. Let's just have a look at all these buildings. Not only does it have the size, it has the vibrancy of it. There's people everywhere going about their daily tasks and things. This is just brilliant. So I'm going to compare Novigrad quite a lot to Carcassonne. Carcassonne really is the most intact, fortified, medieval historical city that still survives to this day. And we can learn so much from looking at Carcassonne uh, and comparing it to, say, you know, video game or movie interpretations, people trying to recreate medieval city stuff. 
And one of the things that you'll notice about Carcassonne is that it is fully enclosed all the way around. And in fact, on many of its entrances, there are some serious fortifications, multiple kind of barriers or gatehouses, and there might not necessarily be portcullises, but there'll be gates, and parts on the city which are there purely to defeat any enemies trying to break into the city. They, were, they have to break through one door and then they have to run kind of like a gauntlet kill zone area to get to the second door. Novigrad only seems to have one area like this, like an entrance with uh, two gates that an enemy would have to bust through. But the issue that really has a major you know, effect on it, uh, Novigrad's defensibility is the fact that there are other entrances around the city that have no defenses on them at all. See? Entrance with no gate, no room for a portcullis, just an archway right into the city. I mean, if you're going to have main roadways into the city with no real defenses, and yes, you know, there's kind of a battlement up the top with, yeah, they're not necessarily arrow slits, they're more windows, and so they're not thin enough to be what I would call arrow slits, but they're, they're, they're basically kind of like the crenelles in between, um, you know, merlons, but instead of having, you know, just crenellations that stop there, they have a roof on top of it, and so the individual crenelles of crenellations end up being kind of window things, which is fine. They're very similar to hoardings, but I wouldn't actually call these upper battlements hoardings, because hoardings are technically temporary battlements that are added to flat-walled walls, and there are no machiculations, or machiculations, really, oh, it's funny, it's probably pronounced marciculations, like that. And that's the real purpose of actually having hoardings, is to extend the walkway up the top, kind of making a parapet thing where you can then shoot down on enemies. So I'd be more reluctant to call the upper battlements hoardings because there are no machiculations, machiculations. So I do have a bit of a confession, guys. I, you know, I've only ever read machiculations. I've never heard it being spoken in its original uh, you know, accent. So I probably have been pronouncing it incorrect this whole time. And I've been aware of it for a while, but I have no real way of confirming it. I wonder if you say machiculations as machiculations or machiculations or machiculations. Uh, see, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure one of you guys will help me out in the comment section below. So what I was saying before is if you have, you know, main roads into the city that have no significant defense, so there's no gate, no portcullis, and here again, there is a main road to uh, an entrance into the city, and uh, no gate, no portcullis, just, you know, right on in. Now, yes, this bridge would bottleneck enemies somewhat, uh, but it's not really preventing them. Uh, what you really need is a gatehouse on the other end of this bridge here to make people have to break through the gatehouse, first layer of defense, and then have to break through a proper gatehouse at the wall of the city. And down here, it's the exact same problem. Uh, are you seeing a pattern? I think I'm seeing a pattern here. So the issue about having these large, mostly undefended areas, yes, we've got battlements ab above, but if they just run with enough men and, you know, enough force, like they could, people could make a shield wall here, I suppose, and stuff. But still, it's, it's not, it could have been done better, that's what I'm saying. And with so many, uh, you know, entrances into the city, it really nullifies the entire purpose of having the city walled. I mean, what purpose is the wall serving now? Well, of course, yes, it funnels them to try and enter into the city by specific, you know, ways. But that's exactly what this water is doing. There's a moat around the whole city that would funnel people anyway. So the, the only thing the wall is preventing them from doing is crossing the river and entering wherever they like. At least they have to go through some set entrances. But because there's such big open entrances without gates or anything blocking, what then really can the wall do to stop people from getting in the city that you don't want to get into the city? So with these other wide open entrances around the city, it really makes this fortified entrance here laughably pointless. I mean, yeah, good, okay, you have a fortified thing and, you know, two gatehouses, great, it's got a portcullis on it, it's great. I don't know what the portcullis is being raised in, to, but, uh, you know, yeah, two portcullises. All right, so the enemy will just go around to one of the undefended or fortified areas. 
Entrances, I mean. You really need this level of fortification on all the entrances. Otherwise, there's no point in just fortifying any of them, because the enemy will just go around. And like I mentioned before, have a look at how tall the portcullis would need to be to reach the, you know, the ground and to the top of this gate. Okay, that's how big it would need to be. Then where is the uh, the top of it because we know the size of a portcullis now and according to how much it is raised up the top of it should actually be sticking out a bit above this roof just simple physics and geometry people perfect i mean perfect place for a murder hole right above us here but no there's no murder holes then we go forward so no gate and uh, look there's an indent in the wall here so is that provision for a portcullis maybe uh, but we know there's not one here because uh, it can't fit into the roof. And there should be at least a little bit sticking down, like what we see behind us. But then uh, through here, now see here, oh, this is this is what ticks me off, right? Is uh, This is a perfectly sound defensible part. What we have here is a kill zone. It's a death trap. It's, uh, uh, you know, a, another layer of defense where if the enemy broke through those two, if there were gates, gatehouses here, they would then come here. And look, we have... Uh, Walkways up above for the defenders to fire down and destroy anyone caught here down in between. But there's no gate stopping them in this section. They can just walk right through. See you later. Sorry you didn't hit me. Ha ha ha. When we look at Carcassonne, what I notice, there's no real internal divisions. And this actually makes sense because it's much harder to do internal divisions on cities than it is for just large castles and their, you know, separate baileys. Of course, having internal divisions on cities is still a good idea, especially if you want to make them fortified and defended. And we did see that's how the layout of Grand Soren from the video game Dragon's Dogma was done, so I got points there that it had an internal division. But Novigrad doesn't really have one, but it does have a natural division in regards to the separation between the main kind of city body and the secondary island. So what we really need is a gatehouse on the bridge that connects the main city to the secondary island. But if we have a look at St. Gregory's Bridge, there's no gatehouse there. There's a very elaborate bell tower, but no gatehouse. But what I will give the bridge points for is having a vaulted ceiling underneath. Have a look at this. Per like, perfectly designed arches, vaulted everything. That's how you make a stone ceiling, people. Stone or brick, you know, take your pick. But it's such a perfect place to have a couple of portcullises and murder holes and stuff. Look at this, could have been such a death zone right here. Uh, but there's another missed opportunity. Oh, just look at that building there. That is stunning. See here, I've just got to a pause to appreciate the finer attention to detail. You see how they've got the wooden framed and then there's kind of, a, you know, bricks in between? This is actually a very historical way in which certain buildings were built. In fact, good old Matt Easton from Scholar Gladiatoria went and visited a museum recently over in England and he had a look at a historical house that was built in this exact way. Bricks with mortar in between timber framing. I'm wondering why there's crenellations here, because uh, there's no defense. Obviously, it's just aesthetic, but uh, it's just very odd. In, in action, for something that, you know, based in a real medieval period, I would not have thought that crenellations became purely aesthetic just, to, just you know, at that time. Crenellations did become aesthetic later on. People wanted their homes to look like castles to get the prestige. Uh, yeah. But for just a railing on a road, it's very odd. And if you're wondering why they're aesthetic and not real, you know, defensible crenellations, well, the merlons, which is the, you know, actual tooth part that comes up, uh, it's not head height, okay? This is providing no real cover from people firing up at the uh, this, you know, raised part wall thing. See here, right here is the location where you want proper crenellations. This is kind of the parapet walkway just in front of the main castle palace, but they are not big enough. Now, interestingly, uh, the, uh, the kind of advantage about having crenellations higher up is that by angle, you can get a measure of cover. So if we were to try and, you know, see where people would be standing down there below, it would be hard for them to hit someone firing down from the wall because just by virtue of this angle, 
it would be hard to hit them, even though these Merlons are not head height. But if someone was shooting from further away, where by angle they could actually arc their arrows to, you know, overshoot the height of these Merlons, well then they're not providing adequate cover at all. So the palace slash castle slash it might be a temple because there's a lot of people praying in it. I'm just going to call it the castle, okay, because it's the perfect place for a ca the castle to be located. And also, interestingly enough, uh, it could also be called a citadel because a citadel is the fortified castle located in or directly adjacent to, still connected to the walls though, to a city. I really like that there's not one direct, you know, road to the castle. You have to kind of go through a windy route, which is exactly what you want. You know, you want people to go a long way around where you can build up defenses along the road towards it. And then we get here, right? And I would call this a gatehouse. We've got a portcullis, which is suffering from the same problem as the other portcullises, is that uh, it basically disappears into a void once it gets, you know, raised up because uh, it should technically be sticking out to the top of the roof according to how big it should be for this part here then we go here and uh, no murder holes which is what you want now not all gatehouses would have murder holes in between but i always compare it to the best case scenario what you would want to make the city as defensible as possible then you have a gate with a small door in seems good enough it works and then we are in the it's funny you i would call this a bailey there's an, it's not fully enclosed by walls but it is uh, enclosed by cliff drops on either side which basically gives it the same effect so i would call this a bailey but it does lose some defensive advantages that there aren't walls on surrounding this courtyard completely where the defenders can stand atop and fire down on anyone who's broken through the gate the castle design is interesting i've never seen a historical castle match uh, some of the kind of embellishments that i see here i'm not t talking about the tiling and stuff like that uh that's personal preference people can dress up and color their castles whatever they want and castles could be more colorful than you think in some cases castles were fully whitewashed on their surface so they didn't well they weren't stone they looked like these big white majestic kind of structures but of course now all that whitewash is you know washed away and it's just stone so they don't look what look like what they did originally i'm very glad that the roof is vaulted underneath here you would want it vaulted these big archways to hold that big beautiful tower up above and i would actually call that tower the donjon now it's funny the term donjon because it originally meant and was completely synonymous with the term keep people use the term donjon to simply just refer to the keep of the castle and it meant the largest kind of building structure of the castle but then the term evolved and changed and started to be used in different contexts and generally donjon is a term that refers to the largest tower of a castle not the largest building per se and it's really in regards to height so you can have a keep where which is the main habitable living part of a castle where everyone you know hangs out and lives and where the lord's uh, quarters are and you know the great hall and stuff and then you have a big tower next to it and it doesn't have to be a fantasy tower just like a big you know structure that's taller than the keep and that would be called the donjon it looks like i can't really get access inside of the castle so i can't review uh, how realistic its layout is and such but we can get a look at the castle from behind. Uh, it's not enough to figure out its exact layout. But what I do notice is a distinct lack of battlements around its edges. I don't see crenellations or whatnot. No real ramparts or arrow loops, just kind of windows. Now it's interesting because the castle doesn't really need to be heavily fortified because look at its location. Look at this cliff edge it's built atop. Nobody is going to take this castle from any direction other than its main approach. So yeah, there's no real need to fortify anything else and there you go this has been my review of well, i was about to say care Morin. i mean novigrad from the witcher and my overall conclusion and thoughts on this city 
Gee, like, I'm so divided and conflicted about it. As, as I was saying at the beginning, there's so much to love, yet there's just these little dumb mistakes. Now, what I will say uh, about this is that the mistakes, the flaws in its design, are not necessarily unhistorical because there were some pretty hopeless castle and defences in the first place. But still, having this huge, big, you know, fortified wall surrounding the whole city and then having wide open, unfortified or, and mostly undefended entrances is very, very weird. I, 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 as I was saying, it really renders the purpose of this beautiful big wall quite pointless. I mean, uh, the, the wall can't stop people from getting into the city if there's big openings everywhere else. I do have to say though that Novigrad, because of all the other areas where it shines, the size of this city, uh, the, the you know detail in all its buildings, how realistic it, you know, the street layouts, uh, it's got this beautiful chaotic realism to it in regards to these elements that I do have to say, uh, Novigrad is one of the most accurate kind of medieval cities I have ever seen in a video game. It really is truly beautiful. And there you go. These have been my thoughts on Novigrad from The Witcher 3. I do hope you have enjoyed and I hope to see you again. And until that time, farewell. Sir, you do know that your longsword is stabbing through your coat. Well, I guess it works as some kind of a sheath, especially if you don't have a belt. Tiles. Classic medieval type of roofing. Uh, oh, okay, can I, can I climb up? Climb, 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 yeah, there we go! Parkour, parkour! Oh, that cityscape before us. Beautiful. Gotta pause just to have a look at that. Where's my horse? Horsey? Ah, there you are. It's almost like you appear out of nowhere. The horsey will not go in the water. Go in the water, horse! It's just water! You don't want a bath? Go! Hey ho! Horses are afraid of water, apparently. Wake up! They were sleeping on the job. I saw that. Gallop. I want you to ride faster. Stop turning around. Ah, there we go. There we go. Some speed. Damn you, fences! I don't know why I'm doing Indiana Jones theme song. Hey, mate! Where on earth do you think you're grabbing with that hand of yours? My goodness! Certainly a bit handsy. Out of my way, soldiers. I'm important witcher business. I've got to do some witching. It's very witchery. I'm so lost. I need to get to the castle. Like, I'm on my way! The bridge there, uh, I'm like on the other end of the city. I'm nowhere near where I need to be. I blame the horse. It's the horse's fault! Hmm, there's a lighthouse on the distance. I might have to try and go and visit that lighthouse and see how lighthousey it is. Ah, I'm falling! I'm falling! I'm, I died. Damn it. Geralt sprints. See how Geralt sprints. Geralt sprints very fast. Geralt sprints through the archway. See Geralt sprint. See Geralt stay! Sprint! Don't jog! I said sprint, damn it! Ah, that, that's better. This man's lazy. Out of my way, peasants! I'll run into him. Boo! Take that! Yeah. No! <laughs>